When I was in school, when I was a short nigga, there wasn't even no BDs around. You was either GD or MC. You know what I'm saying? That was it for us, bro. That was it. Well, I, I mean, that's the section of the city I was in. Mm. It wasn't nobody else around there. Matter of fact, we had a BD. He was like from 70 something. And he was our friend. His name was David. Came to St. James. I swear to God. And he was the first shorty that we knew that had a brother that was in the game and got killed. And it was sad. We was all at the school crying and everything. I think we was about like, we was in sixth grade by then. Now, mind you, with the fights and I like how the LA niggas talking about the fight. We was on that mode. Catch your face. To about sixth, <laughs> to about sixth grade, to niggas coming to school talking about they, bro they was walking to school with their brother and he just got his brains blew out and he don't know what to do. He just came to school because he don't know what to do. I didn't get to hearing that shit. And by then, we plugged. So it's like, man, we could do something about it. Like, we don't, we, we don't have to sit back and be like, oh, it's nothing we can do. Or we're just going to cry and kumbaya and... No, I was like, man, let me go out of that fire, man, because that's just bogus as hell. I mean, big folks, bro, let's uh, let's take it, let's take it back to the beginning, man. Like, outside of the music, outside of the controversy, all of that, bro. Like, coming up in Chicago, like born and raised, like what what section of the city, like what was your household like, and all of that. It was cool, shit. I'm from the low end. We lived in uh, a place called South Commons. It's between the Devil Ones and the PCs. We're really was connected to the PCs. Prairie Courts, right there by Dumbo High School. And my family, we was decent shit. Like, my granddaddy worked at the post. I lived with my grandparents. My granddaddy worked at the post office. My grandma was like a little, like a, uh, a nurse, like for the old people and shit. And then, you know, you know, it was like all this in the house, though. You know, like my mama and all of them, this and that, so. That's how we came out. Like came with my cousins, like my brothers and shit like that in the career together. My one cousin, my my two cousins, one a girl, one a boy. But my mama, they mama then my cousin, his mama died. She got hit by a yellow taxi cab. So in 19, 1991, this just a quick, this on some real shit, 1991. Imagine, look how we living, right? His mama get killed. We all live in the same household. This is my cousin, like our brother. This, and a yellow taxi cab hit him. So people that know, for like a dose of the kids, all that they ain't gonna understand. But when that happened, my cousin got awarded them like six, seven million dollars. Mm. So from 91, financially, it been like. I mean, sure. Man, what, that, <laughs> like, that, that was like through, through a like wrongful death lawsuit yeah. or something like that? Oh, okay. they sued. Mm. Long food, death, all type of shit. He still, you know, he's straight for the rest of his life. But back then, of course, he's going to make sure his family's straight. You know what I'm saying? We was all straight. So we was getting cribs in about, like, 94. We was already, like, we were still in the hood. But that the money, you know, it took time to come. And when it came, you know, we got big cribs in the suburbs, shit like that. But then it was like, shit. And he was doing shit like going to college. I don't, you know, motherfuckers still in the streets, though. But I had financial backing than anything I ever wanted to do. Hmm. So, would you even say your your upbringing was poverty stricken then? I mean, it was <clears throat> even 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 before that came. You like, all us in the household, everybody worked. So all my mom and them, they was like getting jobs at the post office and shit. So we was mic'd up. We was like little drug dealers, eight and nine, going to school with all this. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like I shit went fucked up like that. But we were still in the hood though. But we was the we was the we was that family in the hood that everybody be like, yeah, like they got everything. Well let me go help uh Miss Taylor with her groceries cause she gonna give me a dub and like I got them, make sure they straight and you know what I'm saying, anybody gonna do nothing to them and it, it always kinda been like that. You know, you protect the bag, right? <laughs> it's been like that forever. Man, I don't interview a handful of people who they on the upper south side now, but they always talk about the like the low end yeah, when the buildings was up, yeah, they gone now though. But what's so special about that section of the city? Because it was the most treacherous part of the city. That's where all the gangsters is at. I mean, you know, gangsters all around our city, West Side, South Side, North Side, they everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Vice Lord, Stones, BD, Z D, they everywhere. But well, the buildings was fortresses and for me what the buildings meant was money. Remember I'm a numbers nigga. So if you got hella fortresses lined up to where you could just multiple income coming in twenty four hours, like I, well, my people, you know, we was having buildings like on a certain lines, like the D line do 80,000 a day. C line do about a 50, 60, and that's on bags and shit, not counting on side what, outside of what motherfuckers was doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Shit like that. 
them days, once they took that, they took that. You see what I'm saying? Nah, for sure. Man, I, I want to get a little bit more into that, but I, I do want to take a step back real quick. So you mentioned like your moms, your auntie, your cousins. What about your father? I don't really know. I ain't really get a chance to know my father like that. I just only thing I know about my father is a married man. Come around here and there type shit. When I was in jail for my murders, he wrote me one letter. And when I got out, I went out to eat with him and my mama. He was kind of all fucked up and doped out. And that was the last time I seen him. Last time I told my mama, was like, Yo, you know, he died. And it was like that. So no, no relationship. My granddaddy was my daddy, though. No relationship with him. Mm -mm. I ain't need one. I had a real strong granddaddy. One of them real mean ass. One of them granddaddies, everybody, you couldn't even look at him too long. Like, oh, hell, <laughs> this nigga just like a mean dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, he was smart. He taught us a lot of real gangster shit. He was a nigga that used to shoot pool. He's from 47. And like drugs and all that over there. They used to be shooting pool, red fox, and gambling, people like that, and sticking niggas up and doing shit like that. Then he got one of the post office jobs way back then. You know, I am keep saying the post office, people in Chicago that's old. That know like that was like a that was like being the, the dope man shit. You making bread like the post office niggas. Sure. You know your rent paid. You know your condo paid. You know the kids got shit for the summer. Yeah. A lot of people have post office jobs. Yeah, you they never retired from post office. <laughs> man, you talking about like making paper, man? I mean, um, and I was just curious about you know what I'm saying your father, you know, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, eighth grade education, no father. Yeah, eighth grade, My, you dropped out. Eighth grade, grade, yeah. Grade. After we here, yeah, I ain't never. One of, that was cool. Remember what I told you happened in 91? <laughs> oh, that paper came through. Yeah, it was on some other shit. But my cousin went to college and all that. But he wasn't doing shit. He was just going to have fun, going to Florida. So mm -hmm. I got footage, like Freaknik footage, of like 94, 95, when I was 14 and 15. Down footage like down. a grown ass man down there, iced out, riding new trucks, like living a life. Remember what I told you happened in 94, bro? Seven M's came through. <laughs> so it's like shit. Well, he was like, he was like, he was like coming to America, like a spin the globe. What we going next? It's like that. As kids. Damn, that's crazy, bro. So you never ever had like an actual nine to five? No. Never. never no job. No. Dropped out in the eighth grade. Yeah, eighth grade education. I used my man as a weapon. Get to this paper. Okay. My grandma, because I got it from my grandma, because you know they didn't go to school and shit back in them days and shit. My grandma was Arkansas and them, like they didn't. They if you think about, it, they didn't. They didn't never go to school. The one thing they had over what we got nowadays with the technology all that, they had common sense though. And my grandma always told me, if you could possess this one skill, you're gonna make it past a whole bunch of people. I always have common sense. You could joke, you could do this, you could be bad, you could be this, but if you got common sense, you can always slip a lot of people in the world. Simple as that. You need to know math, you need to know reading and comprehension. Everything else is what history, science, and all that shit. Unless you about to be a stargazing ass nigga or some type of weirdo or something like that, then all you need is math because you need to know the numbers, reading because you need to know how to fucking read, and comprehension because you need to understand what you're reading. Then what else would you need? Once I had that, like once I understood that, I you know, mm -hmm. it's cool. Shit, eighth grade is all I needed. I went to St. James, I went to the Catholic school, but it was in the middle of the projects. It was in the different ones. Where the MC was at, I was a GD, we just had to walk back. <laughs> it was crazy shit. Mm. That shorty, some of my, I never got touched, I was just one of those shorties. I was always kind of like protected by my, by the older niggas and shit, you know what I'm saying? But I had friends that we used to have to walk from school, they got attacked by MCs, got beat over the head with bottles, like little kids, like third and fourth grade, getting beat by grown niggas and Beat with sticks and all that. One of my little niggas, we was in third grade, I never forget. Man, they jumped on his ass. And he came, he came in the classroom, half his fucking jaw was hanging off his face. What? Third grade. We like, damn, they got cut his face open. Oh, damn, to the third grade. So early on, we was already like, you know what? Hell no, nah, little pistol, little twenties. That's what that's what my niggas that's my age, 22s and 25s and shit started popping out. You start hearing a pop, pop, and then niggas thinking, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Now that shit going, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I come from a window, motherfucker, I have a little 22 and let it off one time. Everybody, ah, scared and running. Now you let them motherfucker just stand right there, eat that. You want to sit trying to kill your ass. So I come from a different time. Man, so you said, so y'all was banging in elementary school? Hell yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Third grade, my homie TT come in, have his jaw missing. Like, what the fuck just happened to you? 
Then shout out to my nigga Bud, because he was an MC over there. He a stone, but his whole family was all MCs over there on uh, 29th. And that nigga, man, he tried to stop it, and he did that thing. His little pal, these are third graders hollering at grown gang members. I'm in there, I'm, we hollering at our little, our little MC buddy. Like, man, you need to go over there and holler at them. Do you look what they did to TT? Now, we, we in third grade, nigga. Like, man, like, bro, like, go over there, like, what the fuck you think this do to TT? These are third graders politicking, nigga. Man, go over there and holler at fam and them. I'm already hollering at folks and them. They already come to bring the 22. See what I'm saying? Like, TT just, TT came from the Robert Taylors, but he moved to South Commons because his daddy, his mama married out a janitor. And, you know, back then, the janitors, they, like, if they had, if they worked in the complex, I guess they got deals on the cribs or whatever. So they moved from Robert Taylors and moved to South Commons. So he was new in our neighborhood, but I knew him because of school. So our niggas weren't trying to accept him and was treating him like a goofy, but he wasn't no goofy none of that. He was really a monster. And he was from the Robert Taylors. He was just living down there with us now. So the niggas in the Dearborns had knew who he was. He was in third grade. Just like they already, so they, they caught him, whooped him, fucked him up. They had fucked us up. Now we was on some game bang shit right there after that. Like, hell no. Elementary school, that's third crazy, grade. bro. That's crazy. All us, all us when they got plugged GD then after that, like, like hell no, we got to get put on. Because TT, they was like, he ain't from down here. They always protected me. I was born down there. They know my mama and all them. My mama went to jail for niggas from my area. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm different. I was really born in it. Then it's like, I right, 93, y'all got this type of time going on and this and that. Time to come to one of them sessions, you know what I'm saying? And then bam, when they put me on, when they, you know, how let me plug me, they plug TT down there, you know what I'm saying? And voila, like, niggas ain't have to worry about getting chased by the MCs no more. In third grade. Third grade. So prior to that, nobody in your family wasn't connected? I mean, I just told you my mama was going to jail for them niggas. My mama them Blackstones though. They come from 40 Fifth and College Grove. So that's not, yeah, that ain't. So they, they moved down there when they was like still young, know, they had started having kids, you know what I'm saying? But in their teenage years, they was like 44 for Champlain and all that shit. That's that's different though. Uh, from yeah, but TV. they still was just like the type of people that, you know what I'm saying? Cool with motherfuckers in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Looking out for motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Shit like that. Mm. So, so, let's look back at y'all. So, when they start having kids, you know, we go, we, we from now, though. We really from now. We done seen niggas move, go, come from other projects, build in this area. You know, you know we's there. Hmm. So, we seen it like that. Grew up in that shit. Me and my one cousin, the ring, man. So, you, you mentioned, so that's in the early 90s. That's in the 80s. I was born in 1980, so by 90, I was 10. Oh, okay. I thought you said so. so. Yeah, I was born in 1980. So, all my 80s and early 90s and to 94. Was down on the down on the low end. After ninety four, we had the bread, nigga. We moved. We had cribs to country club hills and shit. Oh, so this was in the eighties when you uh, became GD. In ninety, I got plugged in ninety three. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Like for real, for real plug. But yes, yeah, it's the eighties with the folks. That's all I know. I grew up with them. I grew up watching their ass. Like damn, they about to go to the park. Now, I grew. I was the shorty like sitting there with the ball. Like damn, where they going? Niggas marching to the park. Big like damn, look at woo woo. They was like superstars, nigga. Folks in the biggest hill, scariest hill, the scariest niggas in the world. There's a shorty that's sitting there with the basketball, shorty in the mobile jumping rope. Like, damn, what's wrong? You see some faces looking scared and niggas hurrying up, getting to that park. Boy, he's like, damn, I want to go to the park. Man, I want to know what happened. Then you might see a motherfucker come back with a fat eye or a big mouth. And, or you might see motherfuckers coming back moving fast. Like, damn, it's about to be a war. Like, hey, shorty, y'all going to Korea type. You want to be a part of that shit? Like, man, you down there like, man, I ain't going to the Korea, boy. I'm about to come with y'all, folk. They hell no, shorty, get up, get up out of here. And he like, man, hell no, I'm about to get part of this shit. Then shit like that started happening to us in third grade. Like, damn, like, folks just got attacked, G. What we supposed, who do we supposed to go to? We some third grade. We supposed to, but when they see it in us, we nothing up. Like, nigga, hell no. So they created a shorty account. Like, all 13, 14, 15, 16, you know what I'm saying? Then boom, then shit, they gave us our shit in the South Commons. We was pulled, we had our shit. They, they blessed all us, like, damn. Mm. And from the beginning, you had like uh, the heart and the reputation, you know what I'm saying? No, I always, I always been the same way. I always talk shit. I always, I was a shit starter. I, I start, I like starting shit. I like to see what's gonna happen. And I don't know. I, I was a troublemaker. My mom was like, "You just a troublemaker." That's what they just like. Man, yo, this is a troublemaker. Like that, like get two friends to fight. We hanging out together all day. I just tweet like, man, folks, why is he gonna steal folks' wing like that? He's like, huh? He's still on you now. I'm laughing and I'm like oh, that. The instigator. Yeah, yeah. 
But did you ever get into a lot of like like rumbles like like yeah, fights? Yeah, I, I, like I had the fights if I was a shorty, but I was always bigger than everybody. I was like a fool. So. What's your what's your what's your what's, your, what's, your, what's the street? What's the record? On some fights, like yeah. winning losses, yeah, wins. See, yeah, I had the fights since the eighties. We started shooting towards like I don't know shit. As a shorty, I was a bully. So I was just punching niggas. They don't fight back. Whooping on little niggas, beating them to death. Little bitty niggas like treating their ass. You said DDs? No, I said beating. Like I don't even lie to you. When 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 you know what I'm saying? That was I'm, it for us, bro. That, bro. That was it. Well, I, I mean, that's the section of the city I was in. Mm. It wasn't nobody else around there. Matter of fact, we had a BD. He was like from 70 something. And he was our friend. His name was David. Came to St. James. I swear to God. And he was the first shorty that we knew that had a brother that was in the game and got killed. And it was sad. We was all at the school crying and everything. I think we was about like, we was in sixth grade by then. Now, mind you, with the fights and I like how the LA niggas talking about the fight, we was on that mode. Catch a face. To about sixth, <laughs> to about sixth grade, to niggas coming to school talking about they bro they was walking to school with their brother and he just got his brains blew out and he don't know what to do. He just came to school because he don't know what to do. I do get to hearing that shit, and by then we plugged, so it's like, man, we could do something about it. Like we don't we we don't have to sit back and be like, oh, it's nothing we can do, or we're just gonna cry and kumbaya and. No, I was like, man, let me all that fire music, because that shit bogus as hell. Mm -hmm. uh, like coming to school, having to hear that one of our little homies, he's sad as hell, his mom, they don't know what to do, they just feel like it. Hell no, nah. where y'all from, what's going on? Boom. But them was the good old days, because then you could holler at a big homie, and they could politic and see, and a nigga like, oh, you killed somebody's son, and on some goofy shit, and they'll then they get up with that person, you know what I'm saying? They'll catch their ass before the police or any type shit like that'll happen, because it wouldn't be no police. You heard what I said? Shorty in the fact they didn't even call, he came to school. He was walking with his brother to school. His brother was in high school or not going to school or some shit. But walking him to his bus stop to come to down to the low and we was on 29th Wall Bass. He was on like 74th or something. Mm -hmm. He going to school. He said his brother got killed. He just still, he took off running, made it to school. And then they called the police, you know what I'm saying? From there and shit, you know what I'm saying? But we was all at the school like, what the fuck? You, back then, we weren't even immune to the murders how niggas had grew to be immune to it. It was still like, now nah, it was happening, but we were still young to where we ain't hearing about no murder. They ain't talking to us about that shit. We know it's like, oh, motherfuckers getting their ass beat. We more or less talking about what's going on inside the hood. Like, oh, you see who Watkins got his ass beat up and on some that shit. Then you start hearing about shit like that. Like, damn, motherfuckers just got killed. Then you hear about your classmate. Like, what happened? He just got killed. Like, yeah, yo, man, who Watkins got killed? This one is in the shootout. And you just start like, damn. You be sad, but then it's the other part of you when you were short, it's like, I wish I was there with him, so I could have blew back for him. So then you start developing that gangster shit. You start developing that get back for your friends. That's what I seen in King Von, though. Like, it seemed like when his, when his friend died, over there or whatever, it's like, it ain't no stopping. It's like, you create monsters out of that type of situation. And there don't be no turning back. It ain't no turn up or turn down. This and that. It's just like, that's what it is right now. It's gonna stay that way.